Hello world, it's John Pinto, your roving realtor of Bone Vivont, and I am here with Ted Stefanos. Uh, Ted, tell me uh, what your capacity is at uh, HomeGuard. I am in charge of our natural hazard disclosure product at HomeGuard, so we do property roof and termite inspections, uh, home warranty, and the other product is natural hazard disclosure. So I joined HomeGuard over a decade ago and we launched HomeGuard NHD. We do everything here in-house and take a lot of pride in doing it. Very good. And I must say, as a realtor, I enjoy the one-stop uh, shop that you guys provide uh, because uh, I can get uh, a half a dozen things done with uh, one phone call. And uh, Rafael uh, Batance, uh, tell us what you do other than playing shortstop. <laughs> uh, thank you, John. Um, I'm in charge of the North Bay Territory for uh, Home Guard, and like uh, Ted just mentioned, we do uh, home termite uh, proof uh, NHDs, and we also have a one home warranty side. Um, and just to throw a little couple uh, bullet points of, of what makes the Home Guard experience great, um, that is same day reports if you order reports at 830. That is discounts when you order multiple service. That is one phone call uh, ordering all five service like John just mentioned among many other uh, 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 different perks that you have when you order with a company like us. Very good, I can attest to that. I resemble that remark. So, um, you know, I know all of you were at a cocktail party last week and the conversation came up about elevation certificates to avoid paying flood insurance and you were wondering, gee whiz, I hope that John Pinto and St uh, Ted uh, Stefanos uh, cover elevation certificates. So I'm going to dive in with a little anecdote. Uh, well, I lived for decades in downtown San Jose, where you have uh, uh, Coyote Creek and Guadalupe uh, River, I guess it's called. Uh, and a lot of those older homes are uh, just outside of both river and creek beds and in flood zones. Uh, and there is a preponderance of what we like to call uh, one and a half story Victorians, where you have a basement, a submerged basement with a walk up to the first floor. And every now and then we would sell a home that was in a flood zone. And just looking at it, we knew about elevation certificates. We suspected we could get them and God bless the city of San Jose uh, they actually have a staffer and a department in charge of elevation certificates. So, um, Ted, can you impart to us um, the disappointment that one uh, has when they find out they've just bought a home in a flood zone and have to pay for flood insurance through the nose and the elation that they and their realtor has when their realtor is a hero and goes to the elevation certificate department? Sure. Yeah. And flood insurance is not inexpensive, so I can understand the elation. Uh, but if you can essentially prove to the lender that your lowest adjacent grade, meaning the lowest level where your home foundation touches the soil, is built at an elevation that's above the base flood elevation that's mapped on the maps, then you can get a waiver. It's called a LOMA, a LOMA letter map amendment. Uh, now, any licensed surveyor should, to, should be able to perform this, uh, this service. And what they do is they find benchmarks and shoot the precise elevation. And so they go down to a tenth of a foot. So if you can show that your house is 171.3 feet above sea level and the base flood elevation is 171.2, then you can get out of paying flood insurance. So, so let's, talk, let's talk about how binary or not binary that is. I, I mean, generally, if you go to the city of San Jose, it's going to be very binary. Yeah, you qualify or no, you don't, correct? Well, yeah, a lot of times they might ask you, do you have a basement? Uh, you had mentioned basements because mm -hmm. the lowest floor level of the basement is the lowest floor level. So okay. it's not good if you have a basement. Now, you have options. If you don't use that basement at all, you can fill it in with, with sand or something like that and make it unusable. And then, and then that would be considered uh, a loophole where you can get out of it, where the lowest adjacent grade becomes the actual home itself again, not right. the basement. 
So, so let me ask you, uh, ha have you had much uh, observations in this area? Or, or I, I would think that this is probably out of your bailiwick. You never drill down to the granular level of realtors and lenders and home buyers and home owners um, trying to get an elevation certificate, do you? Well, we will tell, um, we kind of stop at the point where we are providing the information on for them to to research that to find a find a licensed surveyor and because if you find a good licensed surveyor they'll be able to contact fema apply for that letter of map amendment and get that information back and get that to the lender so that's where we stop we will make the determination because when we're looking at when we're doing our nhd reports we're not looking at the structure um, you know, we treat it, we're, we're looking at the property boundary lines and determining if any portion of that boundary, that parcel is within a special flood hazard zone. So you could have in many cases, especially when you back up to a creek, uh, you can have like 20% of your parcel, say the back 20 feet are in a flood hazard zone. That's going to be reflected on the NHD report as yes, that X box, the check is going to be checked yes for special flood hazard area. So the recipients are going to get the NHD report. They're going to say yes, it's in a flood hazard zone. Now we do go to the next extent, extent and say whether or not it's located partially or within. So we will disclose located partially within a zone A or A E or A H or whatever. Uh, and, but then they have to take it from there uh, if they want to try and get out of bank flood insurance. Now, sometimes the lender themselves will look at it and they can see like only 1% of the parcels in a flood zone and they can make that call like we're not going to require flood insurance and not require them to go through that step of hiring a surveyor and getting an elevation certificate. I have personally so, experienced that. I had a listing on Coastland off of uh, Kirtner that backed up to uh, Guadalupe River. Mm -hmm. And it was like a 300 long foot lot. Uh, and the very back part of it was in the floodplain, but uh, it was nowhere near the house. Right. So we, we, we got an exclusion. We got an exclusion. Right. So, okay, so, so let's talk about the uh, takeaway here. Uh, I'll summarize it and you tell me if I've missed anything, Ted. Uh, so, a, B, I bought a house outside a flood zone. I bought a house in a flood zone. If you, it's outside flood zone, you have to worry. If it's in a flood zone, uh, you can check with the municipality, ask for whoever is in charge of elevation certificates, and they could quickly reference whether or not, yes, it is, or no, it isn't. If it is, if it does have an elevation certificate, then uh, you get that elevation certificate, give it to your lender and your insurance company, and you're lucky you're uh, excluded. The third category I'd like to talk to you about, I, I, I remember I have in my uh, address book, Rolodex, uh, the phone number for some obscure company in Kansas City that for like $800 will run a test on whether or not you qualify for that elevation certificate. Mm -hmm. So even if it doesn't exist, you can escalate. Do you know anything about that, Ted? I wonder if that's the E Loma, like a, a letter, uh, it's called like an E Loma. So a letter map amendment, but uh, uh, E, Le I, I guess it would be uh, like electric. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. No, I, I, I don't know about any companies that do that, but I know there is a an E Loma where you can do that without having a surveyor come out to the property. So yeah. that might be in a situation where they're using recent aerial photographs and which we have a lot of very good detailed satellite imagery where we can, you can see the footprint of the home. And if it's mm -hmm. clear that the, the, the flood hazard zone is a ways from that, uh, then they may accept that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. So uh, again, the takeaway for uh, existing homeowners, or home buyers who are thinking about buying a house in escrow or just closed is if you are facing a decision of uh, dealing with being in a flood, in, uh, a flood zone and being faced with having to provide flood insurance, make the simple call to City Hall 
have them refer you to the elevation certificate department or staffer, and you may be shocked that you've just put $2,000 in your pocket and secured the certificate to preempt you from having to pay for flood insurance. Would you say that accurately? Uh, yeah, the, the only thing I'd add to that is that they can still get flood insurance if they want to protect themselves, but you would get it at a much lower rate too. So okay. that's the good thing. So, um, and even if you're not in a flood hazard zone, the, the NHD reports that we provide do provide a map and the flood zones are in purple. So if they can see that there, there's a huge flood zone, fl flood plain near their property and they're really close to it, but they're not in the flood zone and you're, they're in a zone X, 500 year or areas outside of the 500 year flood plain, they could still if, you know, get flood insurance at a pretty good rate and protect them because I, I think I mentioned earlier about 30 to 35% of properties that flood around the United States aren't even mapped in a flood hazard zone, so. Right, so Raphael, let's uh, finish on this note. Let's make believe that you're an aspiring homeowner and, and you just wanna buy a damn house. And, and you're listening to all these uh, uh, war stories and anecdotes by me and Ted and Bob on coverages and disclosures and this and that. Um, you know, what's your reaction to all of this as a potential homeowner? I I would probably say, I'm not sure if I want to live in California. <laughs> 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 I look elsewhere, very high up in the mountains somewhere where none of this uh, natural craziness happens. No. Um, yeah, well, well, however, if you do go to Louisiana or Georgia or North Carolina, <laughs> then you got hurricanes. I mean... Even though California is very proactive in terms of uh, disclosures for natural hazards, that's only because we're a consumer protection state. It doesn't mean that you can move to some other state and just because there's no disclosure requirements, uh, that means that there's no natural hazards. Am I right, uh, Ted? Yeah, that's true. Oregon and Washington are, are, if not worse, because they have a lot of active volcanoes sitting really close to cities and subduction areas that are offshore that can cause massive tsunamis. It, it just hasn't happened up there like it has in California, so you don't have the legislation. That's right. So see, I'm advocating already, Raphael, for, you know, because I get this all the time. People say, well, I'm going to move out of California for a variety of reasons. And <laughs> I've lived outside of California for 22 years. Same. I don't want to live outside of California. I will deal with the risk of living in California because I like the weather for the most part. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things I like about California. It's just that there are iterations to being mindful and informed as a home buyer in making sure that when you make a decision to live someplace or buy someplace, uh, you know, get home guard in your corner, whether it's home warranty or it's natural hazard disclosures or it's roof termite or home inspections to make sure that you're getting the full story and you have a real estate broker that knows how to guide you through the transaction and the process, like a Gurkha taking you through the Himalayas without falling off the side yeah. of the mountain. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, you know, from and, and to ask, answer your question as well, I would say that as a new homeowner, I would look to be as informed as I possibly can with all of these resources that, that Ted mentioned, you know, are publicly, av public, publicly available to us. Um, so, may, you know, once again, it's mother nature, right? Like when she decides to attack, there isn't much that we're gonna be able to do, but we can mitigate by being prepared and, and, and being as ready as we can for, for when these disasters happen, so. That's right. So if it's gonna rain, make sure you're wearing boots and have an umbrella. You know, exactly. So it's as exactly. simple as that. Very exactly. good. So, so who thought we could go down the elevation certificate rabbit hole for this long? Uh, but you know, this is what happens when you have a Greek and a Neapolitan on a video call, you know, it could just go on and on and on and on. So with that, uh, thank you for tuning in on our video on elevation certificates to help avert the cost of unnecessary flood insurance, if that is the case and thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video see ya what do we have next we lost your video we lost your audio Raphael
Uh, next was earthquakes, though. Okay. Do we have anything after that? Uh, it, it says in Santa Clara County dams, which we kind of covered. And then number five was natural hazard du jour. We or natural disaster du jour. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can save that for next week. We'll do the earthquakes. So, Ted, just a little moment. Uh, this is kind of fun, right? Easy? Yeah. No, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean... You know, I'm trying you to know, juggle a couple things on our little breaks here, if that's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. We'll, hey, well, guys, we'll I'm going to have quick. to hop off if that's okay. Uh, you know what? It, let, let's say we, we've got enough in the queue uh, for this week. Uh, we have five videos else? right now. Yeah, let's uh, move whatever else we had <laughs> into next week. Uh, let's, uh, you know, send another, uh, put in a recurring meeting, uh, Raphael, yep. to the Zooms. Um, we've got enough in the queue, uh, and, uh, uh, just to double Ted, check that this time works perfect for you, right? Yeah. 11 o'clock on Tuesdays is good. All right. And perfect. then, uh, yeah, earthquakes is, uh, boy, there's a lot to go there, go on there too. Yeah. If Tsunami, to... Tsunamis would be a good topic too. It, you know what? I uh, just send a postmortem. I'll do the same. Uh, and if we want to uh, populate next week with uh, drilling down on a couple of subjects and with subtop, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. All right. Ted, thank and you so, so much. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I was going to say, let's prepare to, uh, you know, cover the rest of those topics next week. Um, I think we had like two or three extra topics that got added on. Not well, extra, we, but that came up. We kind of skipped the, the Santa Clara County dams. We kind of covered that already. Yeah. So yeah. We, are, we did one, two, and four. And five was kind of open-ended. It just said natural disaster du jour. So, uh, yeah. which we kind of cover in every... Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll go earthquakes and then add some things onto that for next week. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I think, uh, you know, based upon me doing this for a long time, I like to have a skeletal outline so we have an idea what we're going to be talking about. But if we extemporaneously pop around i think it adds some authenticity and life to the discussions i agree would you agree ted oh yeah yeah all right very good well enjoy your lunch gents i'll see you next week okay all right Sounds john good. and then john i would uh send you some of those uh updated um edited videos by the end of day today i will look forward to that thank you for your efforts on our collective behalf when do they get posted yeah. on youtube um well, uh, I'm going to post them on, as soon as I get them, they'll be posted all over the place within a couple of hours.